Comics family, it's your boy Jack DeMeo, aka Mr. Bolo, and I've got my daughter Brianna Bolo here. Today off, it's a little holiday time, she's out of school, at work, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to read some comics. So we've got a little comic review and comic haul for you today. And today we're going to be talking about Boom Studios Folklores. Really cool book, I was really excited to read it. I got to read the advanced PDF. I wanted to sit down and, you know, get that good paper smell, uh, get a chance to get that book in your hands, turn that page, see that art, and it's incredible. And I've also gone ahead and put together a little collection on me. I'm a collector, right? i got to have all the covers. So we're going to show those off, too. But first thing I want to do is I want to talk about the book. Um, the book is kind of set in almost like a medieval village, right? But our main character, Ansel here, he kind of dresses like a modern-day kind of guy like he's living in the modern world it's because he's having these visions of a different world and my partner in crime brian wood from the civil Men's comics youtube channel he kind of compared it to the village and i can see that because it seems like there's something more going on than this insulated village that they see and these kids when they turn 18 instead of graduation they go on a quest and everybody's kind of picking these medial quests that you know they're only for personal glory or gain because they've kind of gotten used to the idea of the quest don't mean anything. And then you just go become a farmer or a carpenter or a cobbler or something that they view as less than. Um, but that wasn't what I guess what they were supposed to be for. So Ansel wants to find these legendary folklores that they're not allowed to speak about or talk about. And right before he's about to pick, it didn't work out well for him, did it? Mm -mm. No, his buddy Archer, who didn't have a quest picked out, stole his pick. Now, we've all been in school and uh, maybe you're about to pick a project and you told somebody in class what you were going to pick. And you kind of snitched on yourself, right? Because then they pick what you were going to pick. And that's the worst. So this happened at his, the biggest moment. But, of course, when that happens, you know, the towns, the people, the librarians who run the school, they're not real happy by that. And these librarians, they're these kind of cloaked people you see on the cover. And... Um, a lot of mystery behind them. This is the great thing about issue one. No matter what I tell you, no matter what you read, you're not going to get much out of an issue one. And I like that about my comics. I don't want you to give me the whole story. I don't want to feel like I, I, I read or watched an entire episode in one issue. I want just enough to make me want to come back for more to continue reading this story. And that's what you really get here. Um, the, the, the librarians end up giving out even more menial tasks to these kids when they get their quests assigned. And Ansel and Archer decide, you know what? We're going to do our thing and we're going to look for these folklords. Because I think there's a world out there bigger than what we see. And uh, I think this is going to be a story about their quest to find these folklords and to get an idea of the world that they live in. Now... I don't know if this is an all-ages book. Matt Kent can go both ways, but I actually read this with my daughter, who's almost nine years old. What did you think of the book? Did you like it? I liked it a lot. See, I kind of thought you would. It's got like a Harry Potter look to it. You're a big Harry Potter fan these days, aren't you? Yes. So, um, this was a good one we read together. I will try issue two and see uh, how, how all-ages Matt Kent is going to keep this. I'm, I'm a liberal dad, so we'll see how that goes. But, um, but right now, what I want to do is I want to show off some of the awesome covers for this book because i know you cover collectors out there that's what you care about so this is cover a it's that matt smith cover and this is the cover b now these were the first two solicited um this one i really like because many of the covers are very bright very colorful and i like the fact that this one has some darkness to it because it lets you know not everything's gonna be sweet in this story then we get the foc variant cover c this was a home run. This said once in future all over it, right? Dan Mora from Power Rangers. Um, he's really one of the most underrated artists in the game right now. And as Boom has kind of risen to independent comic or small press comic kind of like supremacy in 2019, I think Dan Mora has played a major part in that. He's done some amazing work on several Boom titles. So this was the FOC variant. It was excellent, and it was so excellent, Boom went big on it. Because they brought in two incentive variants. The one in 25. Here you get kind of like the inks. So if you can kind of compare them. You've got 
the FOC and then the inks. And that guy right there, he he's kind of a mysterious character in issue number one. It's gonna be real interesting to see what his deal is. And then we've got the one per store. And here you get, you know, just the pencil sketch kind of deal. So it looks like, you know, you've got a cool rainbow. You've got the black inks, the pencil sketch, and the full color Dan Mora version. But that's not all. Because our friends over at CBSI and ComicBookInvest.com dropped this exclusive, which is still available on their site, and you get the half and half. So this is a little bit of this with a little bit of this. Printed out of just 500 copies. Um, very cool. I think it's like 16 bucks too. It's real cheap. Um, so pretty awesome rainbow to, to put together here for these four. Um, if you're a Dan Moore fan, if you're going to be grabbing this folklore set, it's great. But they weren't the only store that did an exclusive. Um, two more stores, Joel's Art Collectibles, who if you buy a lot of boom books, you'll know that, you know, Joe's Art Collectibles goes heavy in the Power Rangers. And they came with this very cool David Peterson, who I know I know if you're you're a longtime collector, boom collector, you'll see right off the bat, this is Kaboom's own David Peterson of Mouse Guard. Um, the art just really smacks of Mouse Guard. I've got used to Mouse Guard, didn't I? So, you know, this is really great. I love the classic Mouse Guard kind of look to it. I love artists where you see the art and it's immediately recognizable. And uh, that's what you get here with this cover. So Joel's Art Collectibles, they've got this one. You can find this one. I think they sell this one on their eBay store. Um, they may have a web store as well, but it's definitely on their eBay store. And finally, this one, man. This one, this one I, I'm hyped about for a few reasons. Number one, this is from my good friends over at Black Cape Collectibles. Black Cape Collectibles is doing a heck of a job promoting independent comics. They're doing some awesome indie exclusives with IDW, with Source Point Press, with Mad Cave Studios, and now with Boom Studios with this uh, Folklore's number one. But that's not all. You guys know if you've been watching the channel, we love Canto, don't we? Mm -hmm. We love Canto. And this is done by the Canto artist, Drew Zucker. I don't even think I told you that, did I? So this is done by the, the same artist who draws Canto. And I also love the librarians because they are so ominous and such a kind of a big part in this first issue. I think they're going to be a big part throughout. Um, mysterious in their cloaks. We, we still don't know enough about them. But um, yeah, this is, this is an awesome variant. Drew Zucker. I think there's a 300 print run on this one. It's got a uh, buy price of, I think, $25. Um, but, you know, with a 300 print run. It's going to be tough. And I really believe in this book. I think when you read issue number one, you see the potential for a series. It's, it's tough. Um, when I say series, I mean movie or TV. Um, it's tough. You can say that all the time about any independent um, comic series. Um, but it's, it's real tough to, to ever predict or project. But it's one of those things where... Um, you get the feeling of, I say Harry Potter because you get that kind of kid in a, a school um, kind of set in a certain era. Um, I get the village because there's that aspect of they don't know what's beyond their walls. Um, I get the idea of Dungeons and Dragons because they're going on a quest. And I feel like this encompasses all of those themes. And all of those themes are popular right now. Fantasy comics are real popular right now. So you liked it. You, you said you wanted to read issue two, right? Yeah. So, I'm in for issue two. I got a second opinion on you. Um, but let me know. Let me know in the comments section. Did you like Folk Lords number one? First off, did you read it? Are, is this something that you're interested in? Folk Lords number one, the second print just hit shelves this week. But I think it's going to be a tough find. That second print is going to be low printed. So be on the lookout for that third print. If you missed out on the first print, I think cover A is pretty readily available. But... If for whatever reason you, you didn't grab it last week or week before last um, and you're scrambling, look for that third print that will be out soon. I think that one will be a little bit more obtainable. But, yeah, Folklords from Boom Studios. I hope to do more of these kind of reading reviews, kind of cover show-offs, haul videos, um, things of that nature on the channel. 
Um, but yeah, I'm Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. I'm Brianna Bolo. And this is another Simpleman's Comics video.